Something I've learned, and uh, these are three things you might want to just make a note of. In order to be successful in life, it doesn't matter what you do. Three areas you have to be able to be effective at, and all three of them have to do with managing. One has to do with managing yourself. One has to do with managing your money. One has to do with managing other people. And if you can be effective at those three areas, you'll be successful in life in whatever you do. It doesn't matter if it's your relationship with your, uh, your spouse or significant other, with your children, in your employment, or even as an employer. Those are some significant areas that you'll want to take note of. Manage yourself, manage your money, manage other people. Great leadership skills, and you're learning that as entrepreneurs, and that's valuable to take with you. I started my electrical contracting company uh, as a result of feeling like I needed to be more fulfilled than being an employee. And therefore, I started my electrical contracting company, and it's been quite successful for us. And like I say, we've got six children. My boys, I've learned, I've got five children. I've got, sorry, five sons and one daughter. And my boys have, have learned to be electricians, learned the value of working hard, and went on to do something else that they enjoyed. Something else you want to probably write down is find something that you enjoy and learn how to make a living doing it. We're going to talk about today, if I can ask someone just to reach up there and move that uh, box for me. Thank you. Appreciate that. See how we did that. Just pretty cool. Thank you. We're going to talk about some uh, business ideas. I think I'm keyed up here as well. We're going to talk about uh, some business ideas of today. If you want to be successful in business today, there are certain criteria and certain things that you're going to want to be familiar with and aware of. And I mentioned a few of them early on, but we're going to talk now about the successful businesses of our today, of our day today. The best businesses models of today, here's some areas that they'll need to meet. One of them is they have to be simple, something that we can do. What's the definition of simple? Something you can do. Something that's difficult, something that's tough to do. Have to be disruptive. And what do we mean by disruptive? That just simply means taking something that's existing, disrupting it. Changing the way it's delivered, making it more affordable, more accessible to the average person like you and I. That's what disruptive means. Noble. A noble cause. Something that actually has value and does something for society. Noble significant. Brother Earl mentioned about having a good attorney, having a good accountant, having a good electrician. Those are all noble causes because that's something that brings value to our society. Not easily duplicated. Not something that the guy sitting right next to you can pick up and just do. Something that's not easily duplicated, but it's something that you've created or something that you've taken advantage of that you've been able to share. This one right here, have an app. How many of you here do not have a cell phone? Raise them high, I can't see them. Oh, we got one, we got two people. Oh, she's, how old are you, nine, eight? I was close. Give her a few years, she'll have a cell phone. The most expensive real estate in the world today is right there on your smartphone. If you can figure out how to get an app on that, get some real estate on your smartphone, you have the potential of being very successful in what you do. Let's look at some examples. You guys recognize what this is? It's a taxi. I know it should say taxi on it, but it... You guys ever heard of Uber? How many of you have ever heard of Uber? A few of you? So I heard of Uber. I was flying into Oklahoma, and on the way, someone mentioned to me, you had to download this app on your phone and I said well what app and they told me about it so I downloaded it on my phone I get to the airport in, o in, o in uh, Oklahoma Oklahoma City and I tap the app within three minutes I had a ride from there to the convention center and it cost me $11 what did they do they took an existing industry changed the way it was delivered made it more affordable and accessible they make more money annually than the entire taxi industry and ten years from now people aren't even going to know what that is because they took an existing industry, changed the way it was delivered, made it more affordable, more accessible, and they're making a lot of money doing it. So when they, what do they have? They have an app. I have it on my phone. I tap the app. I get a ride. Pretty exciting. Uh, Lyft is another one like that. Disruptive, simpler, easier. Blo Did anybody recognize what this is? A few of you? Yeah, I remember hearing about that one time. Do you know we used to go to the store to rent a VCR? or a VHS to play in our VCRs. We used to do that. Or go to the, D, go to the, the theater and get the DVD, or go to the uh, place to get the DVD. And you probably don't remember this, but I just turned 50, so some of these things were from when I was younger. I remember going to the DVD store, and the one that I wanted wasn't in. 
You, you probably can't even relate with that because you've never done that. But here's what we would do. We would stand there and we'd wait for people coming in to see what movie they were checking in because we wanted to grab that movie right when it came available. Yeah, that's what we used to do, right? We don't do that anymore. If you want a movie, what do you do? Yeah, Netflix. You tap the app or you just pull it up off of, on your computer. What did they do? They took an existing industry, changed the way it was delivered, and made it more affordable and more accessible. I bet most of you, if not all of you, have Netflix or have been on Netflix. They took an existing industry, disrupted it, changed it, made it more affordable, more accessible. That's what they have done. Blockbuster is not around anymore. They filed Chapter 13. Now, here's what happened to them. They had thousands of stores, brick-and-mortar stores, and they had a lot of inventory. They knew the digital arena was coming, but they said to themselves, we've got a lot invested in this. We're going to keep running with this because it's going to continue to perform. Well, it didn't. They didn't take advantage of something that was changing, and now they're not around anymore. Here's another one. This is a hotel. Have you ever heard of Airbnb? Do you know they sleep more people every night than Marriott? Every night they sleep more people than Marriott, one of the largest hotel chains across the world. Do you know how Airbnb started? Here's a funny story. So there was a convention, a Democratic convention, going on in Denver, Colorado. And there was a handful of people that couldn't find a place. And one of the associates there said, I wonder if we can call some of the neighbors around here that might have a place they'd let us stay. So that's what they did. They called in and said, hey, do you have a bedroom that we can sleep in? Do you have a place that's not being used that we can stay? And they accommodated like 60 people for that convention. Well, look what it's turned in today. When I just knew I was coming here to the university, I tapped the app. I got a hold of Airbnb and I got a room for a handful of us. Very reasonable, very affordable. All the hotels were sold out. But I was able to find a place right here close to campus because Airbnb. What did they do? They took an existing industry, changed the way it was delivered, made it more affordable and more accessible to you and I. Tap the app Airbnb. Anybody recognize this? I know it's a dinosaur. That's an actual camera. An actual camera. That's what they used to look like back when we were growing up as kids. The film, you used to have to take the film down to Walgreens or the department store or somewhere to get your film developed. And you had to wait, sometimes a week and a half, to get your pictures. And you hope they all turned out because you don't know what pictures you took. And you hope your kids didn't get a hold of it and take a bunch of them. And so all, you only have so many pictures you can take. You probably can't relate with that, right? Because look what we have now. We have Instagram. How many pictures can you take with that? Well, until your camera's full or on your phone. You can take a lot. And you can send them right now. You can send them and show them to your friends, your family, grandparents. I've got one grandbaby. My daughter's always sending me pictures from Instagram of my little grandbaby. Doesn't have to wait for it to get developed anymore. They took an existing industry, changed the way it was delivered. Kodak is gone. Brother Earl and I were talking earlier, and he said, I didn't know this, he said that when Instagram was bought by Facebook for billions of dollars, it was at the same time Kodak filed bankruptcy because they weren't willing to embrace change, and now they're gone. As young entrepreneurs, there's going to be opportunities of places out there that you're going to be able to assist in doing things like this. We're going to talk about one right now. We're going to talk about the legal industry. Of all the industries out there, would you agree that the legal industry would be a good one to make afford more affordable, more accessible, and more, you know, easier for you and I to, you know, to be able to use. So why is it we don't use attorneys? You know, brother, we talk about having a good attorney, having a good accountant, having a good electrician. They're all expensive, by the way, just so you know. I'm an electrical contractor. I know how expensive we are. But you call us because you need us. Same with the legal system. We are the most litigious society in the world. There is 172 lawsuits filed every minute. That's about three a second, clear across the country. Three a second. Why do you think people sue? Here's the right answer. Because they can. You can sue anybody at any time for anything in America. What does USA stand for? You can sue anyone. <laughs> That's an unfortunate reality. If they have representation and you don't, you lose by default. Why don't we hire attorneys? Not that, it's not that uh, they're unaccessible. It's that they're unaffordable. And that's important to understand. They are accessible, 
but do we have access to them if our bank count is limited? 7% of the country can afford legal counsel. The rest of us either get a public defender appointed to us or, or good luck with that. And why is that? They're unresponsive. What does that mean? I don't know if you've ever used attorneys. You're young. You probably have hopefully not used attorneys that you're aware of, even though the fact that you're unaware, you have used attorneys, you've, written con you've signed contracts and documents, you've got cell phones, apartments, those types of things. Get a hold of an attorney, you're lucky that they'll get back with you, and who's going to hold them accountable? I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. Legal Shield has an app. Here's what Legal Shield has done. They took an existing industry, changed the way it was delivered to the average person, made it more accessible and more affordable. Here's just one of the many other companies out there, and we're going to quickly talk about this and show you how that does exactly what we've talked about. So Legal Shield now has become more affordable, more accountable, more responsive, makes it simpler, easier, and more affordable. If you want to call, pick up the phone and call an attorney, you have that access from the tap of an app, and you have it right now, and, these, and that's what it does for you. Let's quickly talk about Legal Shield. 1972 is when Legal Shield's been around. They've been around for 45 years. Here's what we know. They have passed the most critical test and that is the test of time. They've been around 45 years, very good at what they do and making it more affordable, more accessible to you and I. Absolutely powerful, absolutely incredible. I've had the membership myself for 15 years. I found out about this 15 years ago. I got it because it made sense. Here's what I know. The wealthy spend a lot of money making sure they know and understand their rights before they make a decision because they know how expensive it is. Here's also what I know. It's expensive to know, but it's more expensive not to know. And that's why this membership has been so valuable, because now I can know. 1972, it started because Mr. Harlan Stonecipher was in an automobile accident in 1969. Lady crossed the lane, hit him, put him in the hospital, and then sued him. It was her fault, but she sued him. He hired an attorney. It cost him $4,000 in 1969, which is a year, year's earnings today. If you have a year's earnings set aside, just in case you're ever up in a lawsuit, maybe you don't need something like this. I don't have to have a year's earnings set aside period. He went to his attorney and he said, what do I do if this happens again? His attorney says, you need legal insurance. He says, well, sign me up. He said, well, it doesn't exist. Here's what he found. 80% of homes in Europe have legal plans. 80% of homes. This was even in 1969. They're the least litigious society in the world. The least litigious society in the world. You now have access and your rights are protected. Pretty valuable. Approximately 4.6 million lives in, USA and in the U.S. and Canada 40, or they're in all states, four provinces of Canada. Better Business Bureau gives them A+, plus, almost five stars on Facebook. These are what people are saying about the company because they're real, they're great, and they do great things. Here's our purpose to protect and empower people, provide equal access to liberty, equality, opportunity, and justice that every North American deserves and expects. We're the most wealthiest country in the world. If you've ever been to the Supreme Court Justice Building, it says right on it, equal justice under the law. Well, is it that way in our society today? Do we have equal justice? What determines how many rights you get in our society today? Yeah, that's right, how much money you have. How come because you have more money than me, you get more rights than me? And that's wrong, but that's how it is in our society today. And I can tell you a lot of stories, but I won't take the time. So make it where you and I have our rights protected, absolutely powerful, absolutely important. Help people improve their lives by teaching life-transforming skills. What does that even mean? You've probably always heard the mantra, this is something else you want to get in your notes. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always got. Definition of an insanity, Albert Einstein. Yeah, how do we become better and more successful in society? We've got to learn the right concepts, learn the right principles for those that have already been there and done that. Deliver exceptional products and services to promote peace of mind and confidence in a world that is oftentimes uncaring and selfish. Does that look, sound like the world that we live in today? Unfortunately, yes. Here's what, here's what happens. I talked about the, the uh, wealthy accessing the legal system. With a member of Legal Shield, we have unlimited access. We can pick up the phone, call an attorney anywhere in the country, four provinces of Canada, to make sure we know and understand our rights. I've called them in Texas, where I'm from originally. I've called them in Georgia. I've called them in Arizona. I've called them in California. I've called them in Utah. I've called him in Wyoming, called him in Idaho. Is that because I'm a troublemaker? I don't think so. But because I want to know what my rights are, to make sure my rights are protected. A few years smiling, you think I'm a troublemaker, don't you? All right, that's okay. So unlimited access, we can pick the phone, know we, make sure we know and understand our rights right now. They're responsive, they're accountable. They're gonna make sure that we know, make sure our rights are protected at every age, 
Letters and phone calls. Have you ever got so upset at someone you wanted to write them a nasty letter? Come on, be honest. I don't see anybody shaking their heads. And did you write the letter and what did that do for you? Did you know 90% of the time a letter from an attorney fixes the problem? They don't honor your lease agreement. You purchase a vehicle, a cell phone contract, a gym membership. You go to a department store and they sell you something that's defective. And they say, well, that wasn't defective. Well, you took it right out of the package and it was. Are you going to go against those huge companies or are you going to have an attorney write a letter for you and that's what you'll get unlimited written on your behalf, which is pretty powerful. Contracts and documents. Have any of you ever signed a contract or document? I know you have because all of you have cell phones except for this eight-year-old over here. Did you have your attorneys review that contract or document before you signed it? Of course not. You wouldn't think that you need to. Did you know courtrooms are full today of people who signed contracts and documents they should have never signed? They just simply signed it because that's what the person at the table, across the table said that they should do. Not realizing they didn't understand it any more than they did. They just know their attorney said to make sure you sign it. Why not have your attorneys review it? And that's what you get. Unlimited contracts and documents. Reviewed for you up to 15 pages. Most contracts and documents are less than 15 pages. IRS audit assistance, if you're ever audited, 50 hours every year of a tax attorney specializing in tax law to go through that audit. And I'll go through some of this stuff pretty quickly. Civil trial defense. Does anybody like to sue anybody else in this country? What was the number I used? 172 lawsuits a minute is all. That's all. If you end up being one of those, you'll get representation. 60 hours the first year, 60 hours prepaid for trial time in your pocket. It's going to cost them before it costs you. That goes up 60 hours every year going forward. 120, 180, 240 after five years to 300 hours in your back pocket if someone's going to come against you to sue you. Trust me, it happens, but only 172 a minute. We're the most litigious society in the world. You have that protection and that coverage. Absolutely powerful. Family, family domestic services, after 90 days, this automatically kicks in. Uncontested, divorce, adoption, separation, name change. There are a lot of families that are having challenges having children nowadays. And it's expensive to adopt. There's people who get this membership just because they want to take care of the legal fees. Thousands and thousands of dollars in legal fees and savings there. This one right here, none of you can probably relate with. I've gotten a few of these awards, get going a little faster than what the people in the car tells you you should be going. If you happen to get a speeding ticket, they're not going to fix a ticket. Now, I'm not proud of this. I've had the membership for 15 years. I've got nine tickets in those 15 years. I've gotten zero points on my record. Now, I've paid some fines. I've been guilty of taking some classes, but they've given me representation. Representation is huge. Here's what I know. I don't belong in the courtroom. I don't belong there. That's not my arena. But if I need to be in there, why not be in there with someone that belongs there? Nine out of nine times, they've been there for me and helped keep the points off my record. This membership also covers my children. Up to the age of 26 living at home or 26 at college, not married. You can be covered under your parents' plans if you're under the age of 26, not married here at college. A couple of my boys got tickets. Matter of fact, one of them, he, it was Saturday morning. It was 7 o'clock in the morning, out moving pipe. Matter of fact, just a, about a half a mile from Brother Earl's home. And he was done moving pipe. He was 16. He just got his driver's license in July, or in June, and this was now July. He's anxious to get home. Nobody anywhere but a deputy sheriff. 20 miles over the speed limit. Whose insurance goes up when your teenager gets a ticket? Yes, moms and dads. He got that one completely dismissed. I don't know how. I just said thank you. They said thank you for being a loyal legal show member. And my next son, he's going to high school. I know you've never done this. Rolls through a stop sign, doesn't come to a complete stop. I know, you guys have never done that. And he gets a ticket. Whose insurance goes up? I got that one dismissed. I don't know how. I didn't ask. I just said thank you. Representation's huge in our society today. Take a picture of it right from your phone. Send it to the law firm right from your phone. They'll give you representation. This one right here, this may not be that big of an interest to you at your young age, but let me tell you how valuable this is. Your will, your living will, and your health care power of attorney. 85% of Americans don't have it or need to update it. You think, well, I'm young, I don't need a will. Had a return missionary, came home to Salt Lake, had a few dollars left. He bought a motorcycle instead of a car because it was less money. There was a bullet bike in Salt Lake, not really smart, I don't think. Anyway, the inevitable happened, he got in an accident. Mom comes to the hospital. Doctor says, uh, ma'am, I'm sorry, your son's not going to make it. And we're keeping him alive on machines because that's what we're required to do. And she said, well, then let's take him off machines, let him die naturally. And the doctor said, that's fine, ma'am. If you've got a piece of paper telling me that you can make that decision for him, that's great. She said, what do you mean? He's living at home. I'm the mom. The doctor said, I'm sorry, ma'am. He's an adult. She didn't have that in place. He lived 11 more days on machines. His body finally shut down and he died. Guess who got the bill for it? 
Yeah. So it's not for you that you're protecting. It's for everybody else. They'll give it to you for free, for you and for your spouse, for those of you that are married. All part of the membership, no additional cost to you. Your living will and your health care of power of attorney, absolutely valuable, valuable, absolutely powerful. Just the tap of an app, all right there from the phone. Uh, member perks, hundreds and hundreds of companies with thousands and thousands of dollars worth of savings. We rented a car, a national rental car right there at the airport in Honolulu, got some savings through our membership. And there's just so many ways you can save, uh, cell phone plans. This one right here, emergency access. The bad things only happen to good people during regular times of the day, regular 8 to 5. Nobody ever gets in trouble before hours or after hours or on the weekends. Well, if that were ever to happen and you were to get in trouble on the weekend before or after hours, you're going to have access to an attorney right now. Now, one of my sons was being a knucklehead. I'm from Texas. I can get away from saying that. Yeah, he was being a knucklehead. He was with some buddies. There was some alcohol involved, and he got arrested. He called me at 2 o'clock in the morning, and he said, Dad, can you come get me? I said, where are you at? And he tells me. I say, how come? He tells me. I say, no, you can get comfortable. He said, yeah, I thought you'd say that. And we left him there, but we were able to access the attorneys. We were able to make sure his rights were protected, and we were able to call them at 2 o'clock in the morning. Knew it was okay to leave him there for a little while, and what to do going forward to make sure his rights were protected. Valuable. Huge. Now, there's this last part of the membership. It's called 25% discount. Here's what that means. Everything I talked about is preventative. What if you want to go on the offense and you want to sue someone because they did something to you that wasn't right? They're still going to help you. They're not, just not going to give you all those free hours. They're going to give you a 25% discount, which is a pretty significant discount if you think about how much 25% saving is. The average lawsuit in the country is $4,800. You thought it would be more than that, didn't you? I did as well. Attorneys want you to settle out of court for $2,000. Then they feel like everybody gets a deal. No, you're still at two grand. But if it's a 25% savings, that's a $1,200 savings. But if it's a 50,000, 100,000, or beyond, that 25% really starts to add up. Attorneys say we don't talk enough, near enough about that. Who's covered? We talked about this just briefly. The member, the member spouse, never married children up to age of 26, living in a home, college students, missionaries in our culture, dependent children under age of 16, if you're 18, if you share custody. Physically or mentally disabled children living at home. Here's why this is valuable. Have you ever seen a 30-year-old that is 5-year-old mentally? You ever seen that? That's sad. Can you just imagine him in Walmart? This happened to a friends of ours that they have this membership. He's 5 years old, five years old mentally, but 30 years old, pulling stuff off the shelves. All of a sudden, here comes the uh, security police officer getting ready to put him in handcuffs. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's 5 years old mentally. Luckily, they will access the attorneys right now to make sure his rights are protected. Things like that are going to happen, and they're there to protect you for that. Attorneys are charging $250 to $300 an hour. Legal Show membership, $20 a month to protect you and your family and all your rights. We're going to quickly talk about identity theft, and then I'll wrap up. So identity theft is the fastest growing white collar crime in America today. 72,000 people a day have their identity used by somebody else. You just heard of Equifax. They initially repeated, reported 143 million people were having their uh, information compromised. They're now saying it's over 200 million having their information compromised. That means your information, my information. One out of five children are having their information used by somebody else. What do you have in place when that happens to you? There's a huge problem that everyone faces. It is identity theft. They don't want your money. They want to become you. Why do they want to become you? Because they can do something as you. Then you get the bill for it. Are you okay for that? Are okay with that? I mentioned I'm an electrical contractor. As a result, I've had three back surgeries just from working for a living. Not major, but minor, but still they weren't cheap. Any of you want to just pay for one of those for me? Just one? And that's what the criminals are doing. They're going to get the procedures and you're getting to pay for it. At an alarming rate, and that's an unfortunate reality. You have five areas of identity if you're here legally in the country. Social security identity, medical identity. You have your financial identity, your criminal, criminal, and, character, criminal and character, social security identity. You have those identities, driver's license identities. That's what the criminals are interested in taking. They don't care about your credit. People say to me, well, I got terrible credit. They're not interested in your credit. They're interested in your social security number. They're interested in your date of birth. They're interested in your driver's license, your social security, your medical information. That's what they're interested in. That's what the criminals are doing while they're sitting at home. They used to go through your garbage. You don't have to do that anymore. They just go through your social media. Tax returns, medical claims, social security, personal loans. And in the end, you're guilty until proven innocent. You go to the hospital because you have this bill that's not yours. And you tell them, hey, that's not me. They close the file and say, we can't talk to you then. You say, but that is me. Okay, pay the bill. Well, that's not me. Well, no, that is me. Well, that's not me. 
Or what do you do in a situation like that? You've got to hire attorneys. You've got to now get that all figured out. What do you do when that happens to you? You prove you're guilty until proven innocent. Legal Shield through ID Shield has an app for that. And here's what they're going to monitor for you. They're going to monitor everything that's you. If it's you, they're going to monitor it. Credit scores, social security, passport, driver's license, medical information, email loans, credit cards, bank accounts, black market, web surveillance, and social media. LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, your Twitter, all of that stuff. They're going to monitor everything that's you. And the most beautiful thing about that is what they have in place. So they're monitoring everything that's you, everything that's your children. It covers your entire family. They're monitoring, they're watching, they're protecting the little guys as well as all of us. They're going to do whatever it takes as long as it takes to clear your records for life. Here's what that means. If you have a problem, do you have the resources to take care of it? I know I don't. It takes on average about 600 hours of your time to fix something like that, which you have extra right. $1,100 before attorney fees to fix something like that, which you have extra right. Yeah, that's what they're not telling you. Why not have a company that's watching it, protecting it, and fixing it? And that's what we have. You probably heard of LifeLock, Xander, Guard, Watchdog. Great monitoring companies. They'll monitor it and tell you how to fix it. This company's going to do whatever it takes as long as it takes to fix it for you and take care of it for your entire life. Very valuable, very uh, powerful for what they do. The two apps, right there on the palm of your hand, you've got access to your legal plan. You've got access to the identity theft plan. Pretty affordable for those that are interested. I'm not here market legal show. I'm here just to show you an idea, a concept. It is available if that's something you choose to do. I'm not here to uh, tell you how to do that. I'm going to quickly show you two quick slides. I would encourage you to take a picture. If you would like more information, take a picture of this slide because there's some information. There's a, a, a great opportunity tonight to come to something where you can actually get, get some more information. This one and this, this one here. Uh, so I'll leave up there, that one up there if you want to take a picture. This is on Saturday. So let's get back to disruptive markets for just a few minutes. We all want to be successful in life. 95% of businesses fail in the first seven, five to seven years. Main three reasons we already talked about. They don't know how to manage themselves. They don't know how to manage money. They don't have to be able to manage how to be able to manage others. I run across businesses that fail all the time. And then I run across successful businesses as well that are far and few between. Now, I'm not here to discourage you. I encourage you as an entrepreneur to do exactly that. Find that niche that is you. Find that niche that you can do what we've talked about here. Or team yourself up or partner, partner yourself up with someone that's already there, someone that's already successful, whether it be an accessful, a successful electrical contracting company, a lawn service, whatever it be. We are the wealthiest country in the world. 7% of the country, now put this in your notes, this is significant to know it if you don't already know. 70% of the country control the wealth. 7% of the country control the wealth. 7%. What's the rest of us doing? 93% of us. 7% are the wealthy that control the wealth in the country. What have they done? They've taken advantage. You may think, well, they, got born with a, they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth and they got lucky. No, as I've studied them, and as you do the same, you'll find, they've learned the work ethics. They learned how to manage effectively themselves, their money, and other people. You learn how to do those three, three things that will help you succeed in life. I've been as successful as I have. Most importantly, of course, because you're the tallest when you're on your knees, you receive that guidance from on high. I give all the credit to Heavenly Father and everything He's blessed my wife and my family with. But most important part of that is the work ethic. Don't be afraid to step out of the norm. Don't be afraid to disrupt something that already exists. Don't be afraid to be an Uber that's putting the taxi industry out of business. Don't be afraid to be a Netflix or an Instagram. Don't be afraid when the Opportunity presents itself to let fear keep you from succeeding, whatever that is in life. I can remember it was in 2002 when I said to my wife, I said, I really feel like I'd worked for some of the largest electrical contracting companies. They paid me very well. But when I got home, as most people do, I was going back to work, just doing more side work because you're never going to have enough, right? And so we have two, three, four jobs, whatever be the case. And I said to her, 
I really think it's time for us to go on our own. And she was scared. She likes that security. She liked that paycheck coming in. She liked making sure that, that here's our budget, our house is going to get paid on this day and going forward. But we had to overcome that fear and we had to step out and take a leap of faith. And we started an electrical contracting company. That was the right decision. I'm the regional manager for Legal Shield for Southeast Idaho. Why is that? Because I took advantage of the membership and I use the membership and it does what we say that it does. And people are getting it like this. It just makes sense. A leap of faith. You're going to be in a position where you're going to be faced with a decision. And when that decision comes, your answer needs to come on your knees. No one else can make that decision for you. You have to make that decision from a higher source. He knows more than all of us. If, when I left Texas in 1990, I had no idea where life was going to take me, but I knew someone else did. So as the opportunity presents itself, as it will, remember you're the tallest when you're on your knees. And face your fear and overcome that fear. And remember what Albert Einstein said, to keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always got. We are going to have a, a q and I'll stick around to answer some of your questions. I want you to think where you're going to be in five years from now. Seriously think about where you're going to be five years from now. If you say, I really don't know, that's okay. That's where I was. Start thinking, though, what it's going to look like for you in five years from now. Because if you don't have a goal, you're not going to know how to hit it. Start thinking where you're going to be in five years from now. Think where you were five years ago. Are you now where you wanted to be five years later? Maybe you didn't know five years, in a, years ago. So just in closing, here's what I encourage. Get a visual picture of where you want to be in five years from now. And then see what that's going to look like to get you there. And that'll bless your life immensely. And then five years from now, look back and then do the same thing five years going forward. Every five years, take that snapshot. And it's going to serve you well. So, your electric company, is it residential or is it commercial? The easiest way for me to answer that is simply this. If someone will pay me, I'll do whatever they'd like. But we do. We do all aspects of residential, commercial, industrial. We wire homes right now. We're working on a the electrical is $193,000 on a project in Jackson. We were up in Big Sky, Montana. We did a, the electrical was, let's see, ended up being over a million dollars just for the electrical on a home. Can you believe that? Ridiculous. But nonetheless, and then we do small projects, remodels. Great question. A great question. Let me answer that like this. The best marketing that any of, us could, any of us could do is word of mouth. If you think you can spend a lot of money in a newspaper article, on the radio, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, nothing is better than word of mouth marketing. And three things are important with that. Number one, most important above all other L, of, of anything else is integrity. If you don't have integrity, then word of, mouth, word of mouth marketing isn't going to do anything for you. Number two is honest. Be where you're going to be. Do what you're going to do. Charge what you're going to charge. Say what you're going to do. What you're, do what you say. That's important. And number three, be dependable. Be dependable. So back to your question. Now, I had mentioned earlier that after I came home from working with these electrical contracting companies, I had plenty of people that were having me do other things for them. And so for me, it was simply word of mouth. Word of mouth is the best. If you get a good reputation, it's not from anything else other than other people saying something good about you. But the same thing on the other hand, if you have a bad reputation, it's because what other people have said about you. And so that's important to know. So integrity, honesty, dependability. Those three things, if you want to be successful, those are an important part of the managing, but you'll find that as you learn about that. So thank you for that question. Great question. Did that help? Did that answer that question for you? Fantastic. Other questions? Yeah. Um, I'm curious, when you first started your business, were there any pitfalls that you fell into or you maybe were able to avoid that you might have some advice for other people looking to start a business? Like, what are some common big issues that people just fall into time and again? 
Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Last thing you want to do is start something and not have the resources for it. Here's what I mean by that. So we went on our own in September of 02. I had quit a huge electrical contracting company. I had enough work lined up till December. So I'm thinking, oh, I can handle it. I'll get more work by then. Well, by the time I got that work done, I didn't have any more work right away for a full week. And so I wasn't too concerned, but my sweetheart was a little concerned. We have a handful of children, and we need the bills paid. Fortunately, the work came, and we've never not had the work. But So two word, words of advice. If you're starting a part-time thing, whether it be marketing Legal Shield, whether it be doing uh, landscaping, whatever, if you're going to make that your main income, make sure you're in a position that that will sustain what you need it to. In other words, you may want to keep a couple of sources of income, a couple of sources of revenue coming in. Uh, also, too, don't spend, don't go in a huge amount of debt. I could have bought a couple of new trucks. I could have bought all this equipment. I didn't do that. I didn't need to do that. I had other friends that went on as electrical contracting companies. They bought the new trucks. They bought the shop and the offices and all that other stuff, and they went into big debt before they started, and they failed. So control your debt structure. Sometimes some debt's necessary, but make sure that you have that insight that five years from now you can see that's going to be paid off because you have the work already ahead of you. And when I say jump out on faith, that's another important part of it too. Make sure that you're comfortable with it and it feels right. Don't let fear keep you from doing it. Don't fear keep... Don't let fear keep you from doing the thing that will get you through the fear. Let's see how I did that. Does that help answer that question? Those are some of the, a couple of the big pitfalls. Yes. And so it's going to all that's also going to depend on the market. Now, I've got some real, real estate investments. And if you don't understand that arena, I would just caution you. There's a lot of people. It does make sense. If you're going to spend money, why spend it in renting if you can per, put it in towards equity into something? But if you're going to do that, which, by the way, that's not a bad idea. But back to this at your arena. Make sure you understand it and do your homework. Just because it sounds good and it is good doesn't mean it's good for you. So I would just caution you to make sure if you're going to do that, which isn't a bad idea, I'm not saying that, to make sure you understand. You understand what the, what the value of that property is going to be in five years, if you're going to be able to recover your money. Yeah, it's, it's always better if you can have your money to go to work for you instead of just giving it to somebody else. Absolutely valuable. Does that help answer that question? Did I give you enough information on that? Did you look like you maybe quite didn't get the question answered? You're, okay, good, 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 good. Yes? Great question, great question. So right now, they're in the U.S. and Canada. They have not moved over, but they're getting ready to move over to Europe. They haven't yet. Or sorry, I said Europe. They're going to move to England and the U.K. is where they're going to probably move into in the, the end of this year, the first to next. But right now, it's in every state in the U.S., four provinces of Canada. European countries have about 70 different uh, companies that offer some uh, form of legal plans. But it's, it's not in China. It's not in Japan. It's not in... Uh, England or Australia or UK yet. So thanks for asking that question. Great question. Other questions? Don't be shy. Now we were fortunate when we went on our own because we live in Rexburg. They had just announced that be that Rick's College was going to a four-year university. So the right answer to that is if you have the right skill set and you have the right mindset, then you'll be able to handle it. So here's what happened in that situation. Everybody that was in construction made a lot of money in a hurry. A lot of money. If you knew what you were doing and you could just get people to sign on the dotted line, you go do the work. And if you were good at it, you just kept doing it. And so you make good money doing that. If you have something that is a value, the more value you bring to the marketplace, the more value you're going to get. And so I was, right away, I had two trucks. I had eight guys, and we were working 60-plus-hour weeks. And 
the money was something we'd never earned like that before, and so that was nice. But talking about being scalable, luckily I had a smart wife that understands money better than I do. I just will give it away, and she likes to pay the bills. I don't know how that works, but it works out great in our relationship. And so I can remember 2008, you probably were all too young to remember, at least most of you. In 2008, the economy went south in a hurry. We had contractors just closing up their doors and disappearing, just like that. I had five contractors we were doing all their work for. Never had to do a bid. I, all I had to do was get guys to the projects, and, and it was ridiculous. Well, by the end of 2009, all five of them were gone. Luckily for me, I had enough smaller clients I can continue to work for, though I did lay off almost all of my guys and got rid of one of my trucks, and we scaled it way back. So that's a good question. Scalable is an important word, so make sure that it's something like that that's going to happen, because sometimes it will. There's not a lot of things you can do about it. And then it came back, and now we're that busy again. So, you know, great question. So as far as being scalable, it's important to think that as you're building a business, because that's going to happen. Just make sure you can handle it and make sure those things are in place, integrity honesty, dependability, then you'll always have work. Thank you. Great question. Other questions? Don't be shy. If it's a parenting question, you might want to ask Brother Earl about that one. <laughs> Here's what I tell the people I talk to. You can't beat a man in his own game. Here's what I mean by that. If you want a plumber, don't call an electrician. <laughs> If you want to know about someone in the legal arena, call someone that belongs in that arena. If you want someone that does upholstery, call someone that does upholstery. If you want a mechanic, don't call an electrician. You can't beat a man in his own game. There's people that specialize in specific areas in life, and it's valuable to you to tap your resources. Don't think you can do it all because you can't. Don't think you know it all because you don't. And don't think you know any better than anybody else. Be teachable, be humble, and be a good student. Other questions? All right, thank you for your time. We're going to go to lunch. Come join us, answer any other questions you have. Thank you.